Truth Tables, Part 1, Constructing Basic Tables. Truth Tables display the possible truth values of claims. They allow us to evaluate the truth values of claims as they become increasingly complex. And they allow us to test arguments for validity. In classical sentential logic, we assume that claims at any given time have only one of two truth values, that is, true or false. And we can express these possibilities in a table. The vertical columns include all the possible truth values. As we said, for any particular claim, this is either true or false. The horizontal rows express the circumstances, or we might call them possible worlds, in which a claim has that truth value. So it's possible that P is true. We'll call that world one. World one is where P is true. It's also possible that P is false. We'll call that world two. These will refer to the rows in a truth table. As claims become more complex, so do their truth tables. But if we learn the truth table for each of our five logical connectives, we can construct a truth table for very complicated claims. Consider first the simple connective, the negation. If P is true, then not P is false. The negation flips the truth value of any particular claim to its opposite. So if P is false, then not P is true. And this is the complete truth table for the negation. In a conjunction, two claims are joined by the logical connective AND. In this case, we'll use the ampersand for P and Q. We must keep track of the truth values of each claim in a complex formula. So there are worlds where P is true and Q is false, worlds where P is false and Q is true, worlds where both are true, and worlds where both are false. To keep track, we create enough worlds, rows, to capture all the possibilities. Thankfully, there's a way to know how many possibilities there are. Just take the number two and raise it to the power of the number of non-repeated claims, two to the n. For two unique variables, you'll have four rows. For three, you'll have eight rows. For four, 16, and so on. If a claim is repeated, for example, p and p, you still need only two rows. Wherever P is true, P will be true in that world. Wherever P is false in that world, P will be false in that world. In a conjunction, we have two non-repeated claims. So applying two to the n, we get two to the second, which gives us four rows. Now to construct the rows, start by making half of the values of P true and half false in the column under P. Then under Q, take half the set of truth values under P and make half of those true and half false under Q. So for the set of trues, make one true and one false under Q. For the set of falses, make one true and one false under Q. The last column of every truth table will have alternating truth values, true, false, true, false, true, false. Now we apply the operator AND to these claims. So just extend the table out to the right, expressing the conjunction P and Q. Now in the world where both P and Q are true, the conjunction P and Q is true. And you can show this by placing a T under the logical connective. Now this is fairly intuitive. If it's true that I'm looking at a computer and it's true that I'm drinking coffee, then it's true that I'm looking at a computer and I'm drinking coffee. But in every other combination, the conjunction is false. If it's false that I'm drinking coffee, then it's false that I'm looking at a computer and I'm drinking coffee. If it's false that I'm looking at a computer but I am drinking coffee, it's still false that I'm looking at a computer and drinking coffee. 
And this is the complete truth table for the conjunction. Once we see how these tables can be constructed, we can move more quickly through the other three operators. In the disjunction, only one disjunct has to be true for the whole disjunction to be true. But if both are false, the disjunction is false. So if I'm either looking at a computer or drinking coffee, then that's true even if one of those is false. So if it's true that I'm looking at a computer but false that I'm drinking coffee, it's still true that either I'm looking at a computer or drinking coffee. The tricky one here is the first world, where they're both true. We often want to say that a disjunction or an or claim is only true if one of them is false. But in logic, we're not going to use it that way. We're going to use what's called the inclusive or. In an inclusive or, both of the disjuncts can be true for a true disjunction. So as long as one of the claims is true and a disjunction is true, but even if both are true, the disjunction is true. Because if I'm looking at a computer, and drinking coffee, it's also true that either I'm looking at a computer or I'm drinking coffee. But if neither are true, if I'm not looking at a computer or drinking coffee, then it's false that either I'm looking at a computer or drinking coffee. The conditional probably has the least intuitive truth table. In fact, there's only one way that a conditional can be false. That's if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So in a conditional, the claim prior to the operator is called the antecedent. The claim after the operator is called the consequent. In every combination of truth values, the conditional is true except when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. This can become clearer when we use some actual examples. So if you get caught, you will go to jail. Now this can be true even if you don't get caught and you don't go to jail. It can just be true that if you get caught, you'll go to jail. Now, if it's false that you get caught, but you go to jail for some other reason, it's still true that if you get caught, you'll go to jail. You just might also go to jail for other reasons. And if in fact you do get caught and you do go to jail, it's true that if you get caught, you'll go to jail. What's not the case is that if you get caught, you'll go to jail. If it's true that you get caught, but false that you go to jail, that makes the conditional false. Here's another example. If it's raining, then the sidewalks are wet. This can be true even if it's not raining and the sidewalks aren't wet. It can also be true in cases like World 3, where it's not raining, but the sidewalks are wet for some other reason. The sprinkler's on. Someone poured water on it. The snow is melting. It's still true that if it's raining, the sidewalks are wet. And of course, it's true if it is raining and the sidewalks are wet. What's not true is that if it's raining is true, and it's false that the sidewalks are wet. For example, if the sidewalks are covered, it could be true that it's raining, but false that the sidewalks are wet, in which case the conditional, if it's raining, then the sidewalks are wet, is false. The biconditional. The if and only if. This is true when both sides are true and both sides are false. But if one is true and one is false, then the biconditional is false. A couple of examples help to make this clear as well. You're a female if and only if you have two X chromosomes. This is true even if I'm male because I'm a female if and only ha if I have two chromosomes. I just don't have two chromosomes and I'm not female, but it's still true, the biconditional. It's also true if you are a female and you do have two X chromosomes. But if you're a female without two X chromosomes, this is a false biconditional, if that's a possibility. Here's another example. An object is a circle if and only if all its points are equidistant from its center. This is true even of squares. A square is a circle if and only if all its points are equidistant from its center. Turns out that a square is not a circle and all its points are not equidistant from its center. So even though both of those are false, it's still true that an object is a circle if and only if all its points are equidistant from the center.
So those are basic truth tables. For more on truth tables, see the video Part 2, Constructing Complex Truth Tables.